Jack, it's great to see you. And obviously it's a really big day in terms of structural changes coming into the league for the 2026-27 season onwards. What can you tell us about that? It's a really exciting day. It's, it's been a while coming being able to share the news of, of our new league format today. I know that those that are really invested in the Comi Premier have waited quite a while for this news since obviously we launched back in April our Comi Premier strategy, highlighting the timeline of the journey that we're going to go on. Um, but today we're revealing that our Comi Premier that everyone loves is, is going to be developing into a 16 team league from the 26 27 season. Uh, I'm sure we're going to get into the intricacies around the actual structure of its league itself, but we're delighted to be able to share this news with the world today. So an increase in teams then from 12 to 16, I'm sure this was a result of a lot of lengthy conversations and consultations and so on, but how did you come to that number of 16? So it was really important in this process is that we had some independence. So it wasn't just the FAW being able to articulate and go through those that decision making process. We onboarded what we believe is one of the best uh, competition intelligence companies in the world in 21st Group to be able to provide this real strong insight and independent analysis of what we believe we need as a structure in order to deliver our key outcomes associated to uh, the outcomes of the strategy, the outcomes that we think need to come into the game here in, in Comrie. And so after modelling a number of variations and, and, and really looking at the science behind what is going to allow us to thrive, this is the number of 16 and, and the structure that we'll talk about in a second is, is where we've, we've fallen upon as the best outcome for our league moving forwards. Every team will play everyone home and away in that structure. And then at the end of the season, to protect the uniqueness of what I think is brilliant in Welsh football, the, the league will split into three, three groups. You'll have your, your champions group, which is our top six teams. So in that group at the end of the season, they play each other once and that's where you're going for the league title, jostling for your position in the European playoffs. Then we have our middle group, our playoff group, 7th to 10th, where they play each other once. 7th will have the opportunity, as they do in the current league structure, to qualify for Europe. And then we have our relegation group, so that is now 11th to 16th, where we're introducing a new concept, a relegation playoff game. So the bottom two, unfortunately, be relegated out of the league. And then third from bottom enters a relegation playoff against a playoff winner in Tier 2. What kind of reaction have you had from the clubs at this point? Hugely, hugely positive. So, so this week um, we've, we've been we're very lucky to be able to bring the owners and the chairmen of, of our clubs together around a table and to present not just only what this league structure is going to be and the methodology behind it, but future exciting projects that will be revealed not too, in the not too distant future. We've left that room with the full backing of all of our clubs. So we're absolutely delighted because this process started two, two and a half years ago where um, Predating me, clubs got together around a consultation period of time to really start to shape what they'd like to see in their league. Uh, and they're delighted to see this, that work come into fruition uh, today with the announcement of, of, of our league structure. Promotion and relegation are also going to be changing. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, so um, I understand this is going to be a really hot topic for the clubs, in particular those that are in Tier 2. It's really important that we do protect competition integrity. So one of the questions I've been asked quite frequently is that next season, obviously the season before all of these changes kick in, is there going to be relegation in the Cymru Premier? There absolutely will be, there needs to be. There has got to be something in our league which doesn't just allow clubs a 12 month free pass. We're all aware of some of the challenges that are currently faced in our game around how many clubs can get a tier one license currently. And these are all of the things that we are structured at the FAW to address, support and develop to ensure that we have got the best clubs at that moment in time playing in our Cymru Premier. So there'll be an opportunity for 10 of the clubs to get into Europe. So there's a lot to play for throughout the season. It absolutely is. And we understand that, you know, European football is a huge driving factor and motive and incentive for our clubs to be able to continue to invest on their own pitch product and be really inspired by, by what, what can come down the road for them after a positive league season. Obviously next week, TNS fly fly the Welsh flag out in Italy, which is a phenomenal moment for, for our game. And all of our clubs want to go on that journey as well. I think in order in, in having a champions group and a playoff group again, exactly what you've said there, is that we're trying to reduce the, the minimal amount of games which don't have a lot on it. There's always going to be mid-table games of football being played in any level, OK? There's a reason that there'll be certain clubs that don't get put on Super Sunday on the penultimate weekend of the season. But what we're trying to do is reduce the amount of of games where there's not a huge amount of stakes riding upon them and we believe that this structure enables us to be able to tell those stories and really be able to you know 
reconnect and, and generate that interest in, in our game and in our league. Connection and storytelling is a huge, huge part of this journey. We've done so much analysis on where we sit as a league currently, not just in the home nations, but across the world. You look at certain data points around our league currently, they don't make for good reading, they don't at all. But there are certain things in there that we absolutely can be the best at. And for us, having a league where we can be one of the best storytellers in European football is something that we should be able to celebrate. The, the nuances, the, the, the peculiarities, the thing that make Welsh football great is the thing that we need to absolutely protect and be able to celebrate through this league structure. Um, I'll share with you, we are ranked 100th as a league in Europe. There are most countries that have at least two leagues better than our top flight league. So just looking at that part of investment would probably not deliver the outcomes that we want. The same if you take the Jeopardy piece, to actually physically create Jeopardy over and over and over again, you need to have a little bit of the quality behind it, but in order to have that quality, you need to then be able to have people that are servicing that game sustainably. So that connection piece, and when we talk around connection, it isn't just with fans, it's with new commercial partners. It's how do we increase our ability to broadcast our game. It's that then that can be invested into the quality and other Jeopardy uh, within our game and within our league to really get the wheel turning on all of those fronts. It's just working out which bit are we going to kind of prioritise and attack to begin with. And, and that's kind of how we've got to the outcomes we're, we're sharing today. So what's the conversation that you'll be having with Tier 2 clubs at this point then? Yeah, I think for us, we absolutely need to consistently understand and continue to understand where are some of the Tier 2 clubs on their journey? What are their ambitions? Where do they need their support in terms of is that infrastructure investment? Is that support around on pitch development. We've now got people and resource in the FAW, which were not here 12 months ago, to service those demands of the game. We've very much onboarded a new level of professionalism and professionals actually themselves in roles, which are now really prescriptive around ensuring that this change can be delivered and the outcomes that we're all sharing today can be enjoyed from that 26, 27 season. It is gonna take a lot of work. It is gonna take a lot of strategic thinking and a lot of people coming together to make this work. But I think that's the exciting part is that the league structure is almost the catalyst to make even further changes for football in Wales, further down the football pyramid. So although those investments can be made into clubs that may not be part of the Combi Premier when it comes to the 26, 27 season, we're starting to build a much stronger foundation base to our game. It's been five years since Colwyn Bay came back into the Welsh Pyramid and I just wonder whether there have been any conversations with a club like Madford at all at this point. I think it's really important that I am open and have a door open to all of these conversations, okay? We understand that there is huge merit and there's, uh, there's a different level of value that could be had from some of these clubs, but ultimately, you know, the clubs will have their own plans, their own ambitions and and got to be really respectful of that. But I would like to have those conversations, absolutely. I think uh, it would be a really interesting dynamic that added to the league. But I've also got to recognise is that they're very much established within their own current structures and they're doing really well this, this season, to, to, to your question. You know, they're, they're, they're top of their league at the moment. And so, um, as I sit here today, the conversation absolutely can be had, but it's not dependent on having a more or less successful league. That's it's really important to, to know. Um, so with, with the, the timeline that's in place now for going forward to the 26-27 season, can you just tell me a little bit more about the transition period and next season as well? Sure. So we've got another season of, of our current format and it's so important that, that the good people out there recognise that we're not taking our eye off of the ball just because we've got our new sexy product coming in the 26-27 season. We are very much about making the best of the version of the game that we have now because there is so much work that needs to be done with our clubs in this space to prepare them. Um, by the end of this year, all of our current Commune Premier Clubs and any Tier 2 club who would like to put themselves forward need to be able to produce five-year club development plans that look at on-pitch, off-pitch, commercial, community developments. So we need to see a real strategic buy-in from the clubs in this space because we're going to be doing more and we're going to be bringing a hell of a lot more investment to the game. So we need to see that clubs have got themselves in a position where they understand their journey that they're going to go on, which is going to very much help us with our next steps too. And then for, for, from my perspective, in the background, we're going to be working away as we already are now and exciting, already excited by some of these developments on how do we start building a, a stronger commercial portfolio in this space. We've got some really good partners that are already part of our game. We want to continue going on journeys with those partners, but we also recognise we can't deliver any of this if the financials behind our game don't improve. 
and we think that we've now got a value and a position where we can drive that change. If we're going to bring more clubs into our league, we've got to play a position to be able to reward and incentivise that, not just through having a nice new league structure in European football, but by the profile, through the finances, through what you can get being in the Commune Premier isn't available anywhere else in Welsh football. So at the moment, I fully understand that there's still a perception out there where the Combi Premier may not be the ambition of some of those clubs further down the pyramid. You know, do we want to leave localised football? Do we want to onboard those extra costs? Do we want to play more Friday night games of football with the challenges that could come from that? But our job is to ensure now, as I, hu I truly believe we are doing already, incentivising that this is you know, the holy grail of football here in Wales. And every club should be striving to want to be a part of this because it'll be too good to turn down. That's absolutely where we've got to get to over the next 18 months. Um, so just when we come to the end of the 25-26 season next year, I'm just thinking about April time, licensing and so on. Will it mm -hmm. follow the same structure and process that it that we're familiar with up to this point yeah, to so, go into the 16 So licensing is a really, really important part of having a high performing league. Standards should be had and we shouldn't be scared of standards. We as a nation have been quite public with the whole process that gets run around the licensing. Every top flight nation has got a licensing process that isn't necessarily heard of unless dramatic things happen. So I think we absolutely can look around how we communicate that. But more importantly, we've invested in a new way of working internally at the FAW, which means that licensing isn't just a black and white process, is that we've got unbelievable people that work in that team. And we've now got a load of league developers in the, in the organisation that will work with clubs throughout the window of where their application is open so that we can now start to understand where investment and challenges may need to be addressed and, and supported with, where are clubs that are in a really strong position that can be really good benchmarks for others and bring others around the table to share good knowledge around, okay, we've done this in the last 12 months, which has enabled us to go down this direction here. And so I think how we see licensing in the FAW now is not just a, here's a deadline, here's an outcome, see what's what. We've now got a team that enables us to actually be really boots on the ground working with and driving change. Because we don't want licensing to be a scary process. We don't want licensing to be the headlines, okay? The on-pitch stuff is what we want as our headlines and our stories and the people in our communities and the great things that are happening around the club. That's our storytelling piece. So there is more work that can be done in this space, absolutely. But fundamentally, we're now structured to provide that ongoing support to clubs to ensure that these headlines don't just come out of the blue at the end of the season. Obviously, a really exciting time for football here in Cymru. Can I just ask you then, what is your message to the clubs, to the fans, to all supporters of football in our country at this yeah, point? Yeah, if I, if I start with the clubs, if that's okay, I think to begin with, it's just a massive thank you because, you know, their patience, two and a half years from start to end, of, and it's not even the end of the process, but to this point, is a long time to, to, stay, to stay with us. But their, their open-mindedness, they're willing to adopt new change. Change is scary, right? It is. As humans, we don't always embrace it. So the fact I've been very open to this guy coming in from England and talking around changing, you know, Welsh football. Um, I, I've been very hugely privileged with how they've welcomed me in and, and really enabled me to get a grasp of some of these things and new constructs and concepts and, and, and change the direction of the game. To the fans, those that are already around our clubs, the brilliant people that are servicing our clubs as supporters, um, keep going, it's great. Some of the stuff that we have seen this season uh, has been fantastic already. I feel there has been a new buzz around the Comrie Premier this year, but it's not where we want it to be now. So to the new fan, you know, give it a go. We're trying to position our product where we're not going to be the EFL, we're not going to be the Premier League, but what we are is a really raw league, really authentic, you can connect with it, it's accessible. Um, your, your attendance and your presence is felt on the ground with our clubs. And so if you haven't sampled the Cymru Premier or the Cymru Leagues yet, okay, get out to a game, go and sample it for yourself because it is brilliant, it is unique, it is raw and it's what I think football is, is great, right? It's not the superficial 75,000 seat stadiums where you could be the back of a stand and no one knows you're there. Um, there's a real uniqueness to our game and we want as many people to go out there and embrace it and enjoy it and, 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 and get around it.